Welcome to another episode of The Bug Bite, hosted by yours truly, Tech Coach Ralph, where we are always engineered to win. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the Rain Flight V88 software bug that went down as the most infamous and expensive software bug in history. Not in US history, but in history. All right, so let's get into it. The Arane Flight V88 was the failed maiden flight of the Arane Space Arane 5 rocket vehicle number 501 on June 4th, 1996. It carried the cluster spacecraft, a constellation of four European Space Agency research satellites. So let's find out more about this software bug and why it was the cost the most expensive in history and what caused it to happen. So as, so as I already said, right? Um, it happened on June 4th of 1996, and it carried the cluster spacecraft, a constellation of four European Space Agency research satellites. The launch ended in failure due to multiple errors in the software design, dead code, intended for Arane 4, with inadequate protection against integer overflow, led to an exception handled inappropriately, halting the whole otherwise unaffected interior navigation system. This caused the rocket to veer off its flight path 37 seconds after launch, beginning to disintegrate under high aerodynamic forces and finally self-destructing via its automated flight termination system. The failure has become known as the most infamous and expensive software bugs in history. The failure resulted in a loss of more than 370 million US dollars. All right. So before we go on, let's dive into this part a little bit more. Okay. Um, the launch ended in failure due to a multiple, due to multiple errors in the software design, dead code. So let's find out what dead code is. The term dead code has multiple definitions. Some use the term to refer to code instructions and memory, which can never be executed at runtime. In some areas of computer programming, dead code is a section in the source code of a program which is executed but whose results is never used in any other computation. The execution of dead code wastes computation time and memory. While the results of dead computations may never be used, it may raise exceptions or affect some global state. Thus, removal of such code may change the output of the program and introduce unintended bugs. Compiler optimization are typically conservative in their approach to dead code removal. If there is any ambiguity as to whether removal of the dead code will affect the output program, the program output, the programmer may aid the compiler in this matter by making additional use of static or inline functions and enabling the use of link time optimization. All right, so let's take a quick example for um, this method. So an integer of ix, an integer of iy. So if you initialize, um, so here integer iz equals ix divided, so the ix variable divided by the iy variable. And then we're returning ix times iy. So pop quiz, where is the dead code in here, All right? Is it, is this the dead code right here? Is this the dead code right here? Is this the dead code? How about here? Is that the dead code? Is this entire line the dead code? Or is this return ix times iy the dead code? If you answered this line right here is a dead code, you are entirely correct. What would be the problem with this with this dead code in here, right? So if you divide a number by zero, that is not a number. Like you can't divide a number by zero. 
So let's say um, X here is 10 and Y here is zero, right? So I can multiply a number by zero because then I'll just get zero. But if I try to divide a number by zero, that's, that's impossible. So when this method is being executed, and I get to the, I'm trying to calculate for Z, and I do 10, which is X, divided by um, zero, which is Y, I shouldn't be able to do it. However, I should be able to do 10 times zero, which will give, still give me zero, but it's possible. But the problem is, if I get into this method, and I have my, my 10 here and my zero here, I will never get to this return statement because I'm trying to do this step here, which is going to throw an exception. So let's do a little exercise, right? So let's say we do, so we're, we get to this method, right? And we get in here and we're going to try to um, solve for Z, right? So our X is 10 and our Y is zero. So we're going to do 10 divided by zero. And we get not a number. So we would get an exception because not a number is not an integer, right? However, if we were able to get to this line, we would have 10 times zero, which would give us zero, but it is a number, right? However, we cannot get to this line because we are failing here. And this is the dead code that would make our... Um, whatever we're running, whatever software we're running, fail. Right? So, so that's the, so that's the, de like, that's an example of dead code. All right? Um, so in the, in the above example, although the division of X is, by Y is computed and never used, it will throw an exception when a division by zero occurs. Therefore, the removal of dead code may change the output of the program. All right? And I didn't, like, Exactly what I was describing up here, and I just showed you with the calculator, that's what they're talking about here. I, I didn't even see it, right? But it, it's, it's a clear example of what dead code is and the type of problems it can cause, right? So let's go back to, let's go back to our, um, to our article, our Wikipedia um, information, all right? So, um, so this dead code was intended for Arian 4, right? But in the, in the upgrade of the software for Arian 5, they didn't remove unnecessary code. They kept it and they tried to iterate on it and it didn't play well with Arian 5. So inadequate protection against integer workflow overflow. So a quick of that in computer programming in integer overflow occurs when an arithmetic operation attempts to create a numeric value that is outside the range that can be represented within a given number of digits either higher than the maximum or lower than the minimum by representable, representable value, okay? So it led to an exception handled inappropriately. In computing and computer programming, exception handling is the process of responding to the occurrence of exceptions, anomalous or exceptional conditions requiring special processing during the execution of a program. In general, a exception breaks a normal flow of execution and it goes on, but that's a good, that's a general understanding, right? So the dead code caused the integer overflow and the exception wasn't properly handled. And it, so it's just, it's, just a, it's just a world of problems. And, and I've seen all of these issues over my 15 years of working in QA and working in the software development industry, um, where like there's some code that should have been removed. Uh, it's no longer necessary, but now that code is affecting and we're not properly handling the exception, and it just it just implodes from there, right? And because of this, this um, dead code that wasn't properly handled, it caused the rocket to veer off its flight path 37 seconds after launch, and everything started to go awry, and um, the built-in flight termination system. Uh, in rocketry, range safety or flight safety is ensured by monitoring the flight's path of missiles and launch vehicles. Various measures are implemented to protect nearby people, buildings, and infrastructure from the dangers of a, of a rocket launch. All right, so it's, it's built-in system. Uh, said, all right, we have to abort mission and exploded. 
which resulted in $370 million, which is the most expensive software bug in history. All right. So let's get into the details on why this happened. All right. The Arian 5 reused the code from the Interio reference platform from the Arian 4, but the early parts of the Arian 5 flight path def deferred or the, the Arian 5 reused code from the Interio reference platform from the Arian 4, but the early parts of the Arian 5 flight path differed from the Arian 4 in having higher horizontal velocity values. This caused an internal value, BH, horizon horizontal bias calculated in the alignment function to be unexpectedly high. The alignment function was operative for approximately 40 seconds of flight, which was based on the requirement of Arian 4, but served no purpose after liftoff on Arian 5. So the code that's executed meant for Arian 4, it, it worked for 40 seconds, but it had, it, it had no value to Arian 5, which... Um, they, they didn't work yet. They were not compatible, right? It's like a, a, a soft, like when you're upgrading software or an API or something like that, and the, um, the version, like it, it's not compatible going from version to version. And now users are having a bunch of issues um, using the new version because um, a, lot of their, a lot of what they were using before was compatible, was built for the old version. So we didn't properly upgrade um, like we, we didn't properly version our software, right? The greater value of BH caused a data conversion from a 64-bit floating point number to a 16-bit signed integer value to overflow and cause a hardware exception. The programmers had protected only four out of seven critical variables against overflow to keep within a required maximum load of 80% for the onboard interior reference system computer and relied on assumptions which were correct for the Arian 4, but not the Arian 5, trajectory about possible range of values for the three unprotected variables. Oh, okay. This, this sucks to, to read. Um, cause, and this shows like the, the cost of software, like not properly testing, not properly um, engineering. Uh, it, is, it can be super expensive. All right, $370 million down the drain in 37 seconds. So years and years of engineering to get this to launch and 37 seconds into it, down the drain. That reminds me of, um, I'll give an example, in jiu-jitsu competitions, right? We'll have a major competition and then we will have um, like, We'll, we'll be preparing for months, months on months on months. And then you get, you get, to, you get to, um, to center stage where, where it's time to perform. And the first thing you go for is a flying arm bar, a move that we never practiced. And you, and you miss and you get hurt and you wake up finding out that you lost and you have a concussion. All right. So it's the same thing. Like you have, you have to prepare. Um, you have to take, you have to take precautions, you know, and if not, it costs you a lot. Luckily, a flying arm bar does not cost you $370 million. Maybe defeat in a concussion, but not $370 million. All right, so let's keep going. The exception halted both the interior reference system modules, although they were intended to be redundant. The active module presented a diagnostic bit pattern on to the onboard computer, which was interpreted as flight data, in particular causing, causing full nozzle deflections of the solid boosters and the Vulcan main engine. This led to an attack uh, to an angle of attack of more than 20 degrees, causing separation from the boosters, from the main stage, the, the triggering of self-destruct system of the launcher and the destruction of the flight. According to William Cahan, the loss of flight 501 would have, been, would have been avoided if the default 
I E E E seven five four exception handling policy pre substitution had been used because it would have not aborted the computation. So it's similar to um, the the example of dead code that we use. So if um, in that example, if zero is passed, then it's going to abort the and it's going to cause it's going to throw an exception. It's going to fail, right? Um, but if there was an exception handling for um, whatever that exception is for not a number, it says all right. If we get that exception, then we we handle that exception by doing this instead. So we will output. Oh, we have an error. We're going to be transitioning to um, to this step instead, right? Um, then this, this is what they're talking about, the exception handling policy pre-substitution, right? The official report on the crash conducted by an inquiry board headed by Jacques Luis Leon noted that an underlying theme in the development of Arian 5 is the bias towards the mitigation of random failure. The supplier of the interior navigation system was only following the specification given to it. It stipulated that in the event of any detected exception, the processor was to be stopped. The exception was the exception which occurred was not due to random failure, but a design error. A design error. The exception was detected but inappropriately handled because the view had been taken that software should be considered correct until it shows it is shown to be at fault. Although the failure was due to a systematic software design error. Me mechanisms can be introduced to mitigate this type of problem. For example, the computers within the SRIs could have continued to provide their best estimates of the required attitude information. There is reason for concern that a software exception should be allowed or even required to cause a processor to halt while handling mission critical equipment. Indeed, the loss of a proper software function is hazardous because the same software runs in both SRI units. In the case of Arian 501, this resulted in the switch off of two still healthy critical units of equipment. All right, so pretty much not compartmentalizing the, the, the software, right? So everything else was still functional, but because of the dead code and, um, and how they were handling the exceptions, it just shut down everything. So let's put this let's put this into perspective of how how because I would say ninety nine point nine point nine percent of us are not going to be on a rocket, right? But a lot of us travel on a regular basis, and to me, a plane is 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 a, a form of a rocket, right? It goes at crazy speeds. So imagine if you're on a plane and the way that they built the software is um, one thing goes wrong, just shut everything down. You can't, there's an exception and it just shuts everything down. Let's say the exception is um, some lighting on, on the plane. Um, it overloads or whatever. It doesn't turn like it, it doesn't turn on for whatever reason, right? And now it just shuts the whole plane down. That's that's crazy, isn't it? So yeah, so so think about that. So and and that's kind of like what happened in this situation, right? Because everything else was working, but um, it, it caught a it caught an exception and it just shut everything down and three hundred seventy million U.S. dollars down the drain. So let's say other issues identified in the report focused on testing. All right. So the purpose of the review process, which involves all major partners in the Arian 5 program, is to validate design decisions and to obtain flight qualification. In this process, the limitations of the alignment software were not fully analyzed and the possible implications of allowing it to continue to function during the flight were not realized. The specification of the interior reference system and the test performed at equipment level did not, did not specifically include the Arian 5 trajectory. So this the area, Arian 5 in flight, but it didn't include the trajectory of Arian 5. Come on. 
Consequently, the realignment function was not tested under simulated Ariane 5 flight conditions and the design error was not discovered. So we're testing under Ariane 4 for upgraded software that works on Ariane 5 and that's why the design error were not discovered. It would have been technically feasible to include almost entire interior reference system in the overall system simulations which were performed. For a number of reasons, it was decided to use the simulated output of the interior reference system, not the real system or its detailed simulation. Had the system been included, the failure could have been detected. Post-flight simulations have been carried out on a computer with software of the interior reference system and with a simulated environment, including the actual trajectory data from Ariane 501 flight. These, simula these, sim these simulations have faithfully reproduced the chain of events leading to the failure of the interior reference system. Failure to test. Oh, but I don't feel appreciated as a, as a um, QA engineer, right? No. Your job as a QA engineer is monumental to the process. You can't just rubber snap. You can't just go based off what the developers tell you. You have to question it. You have to put your insight. How do you think, right? So the developers already feel one way about it, the everyone involved, but how do you feel like after um, reading, like if you're, if you're, let's say you're the QA person for this, right? You're the tester for this. And now everything that you should have done, they're doing it for you post $370 million um, lost. And it says, oh, like just putting it in this way, reproduce, 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 reproduce. Every single time they do it, they reproduce. And how come you didn't catch it? Well, I used, I used the Arian 4 flight trajectory, but this is for the Arian 5. Yeah, I thought it was the same. Well, that type of thinking is what got you in trouble and which cost us 370 million US dollars. Another perspective of the failure based on system engineering focused on requirements. The range of the variables, the, the range of variables such as horizontal velocity and quantity and quantity BH computed from it should have been explicitly qu quantified instead of a 16-bit range was assumed. Assumed, right? The alignment task should have been deactivated at the appropriate moment. Instead, the alignment task was running after liftoff. A failure model of the interior reference platform should have been analyzed to ensure that service would be continually delivered throughout the flight rather than assuming that at most one module would fail. Instead, both modules failed, and rather than killing the flight gracefully, the output diagnostic message, which were interpreted as flat flight data. All right? So too many too many assumptions, right? Like assumptions should be meant for requirements and planning, but we need to have real valid data for the testing to make sure that and, and for different scenarios. Right. So let's take a look at this section. Payload. Cluster consisted of one thousand of cluster consisted of four one thousand two hundred kilograms, twenty six um two thousand twenty six hundred um pounds of cylindrical spin stabilized spacecraft powered by two hundred twenty four watt solar cells. The spacecraft were to have flown in a tetrahedral formation and were intended to conduct research into the Earth's magnet into the Earth. <clears throat> the spacecraft were to have flown in a tetrahedral formation and were intended to be to conduct research into the Earth's magnetosphere. The satellites would have been placed into highly epileptical orbits. 17,200 by 120,600 kilometers, 10,700 by 74,900 miles, inclined at 90 degrees to the equator. So what was the aftermath to all of this? Following the failure, 
Four replacement Cluster 2 satellites were built. These were launched in pairs aboard Sozu U slash Frigat rockets in 2000. So this took, this took off in 1996 and it failed after 37 seconds. So it took them another four years before they were able to, to launch four replacements. So let's assume they, let's assume like when they first, like it was maybe four years or so, or five years from the first, um, from like the Ariane 4, I don't know. Right. But it took a lot of time and a lot of money. The launch failure brought the high risk associated with complex computing systems to the attention of the general public, politicians, politicians, and executives, resulting in increased support for researching for research on ensuring the reliability of safety critical systems. The subsequent automated analysis of the Arian code written in ADA was the first example of large scale static code analysis by abstract interpretation. The failure also harmed the excellent success record of the European Space Agency's rocket family set by the high success rate of the Ariane 4 model. It was not until 2007 that Ariane 5 la launches were recognized as being as reliable as those of the predecessor model. So it took about 11 years after that for them to be recognized as being as reliable as the predecessor model. All right? That is our article on the Arian flight V88. That was probably my favorite bug bite article that we went through because it went into so many details of what caused the actual issue. And um, it was like explaining the dead code, showing you guys the example of dead code. That was very uh, fun and intriguing because um, it makes so much sense on what can cause these errors. And it gives you a little bit of insight into the, um, the software development um, that takes place in these, um, like this is a rocket, right? But w when you think about the development of, um, you know, airplanes, cars, boats, all these different things, right? It's all software. As, we, as we've seen before, you know, um, in like the scooters and the cars, like these little um, programming issues can, can have like really life impacting events. You know, so it, it's just it's just interesting on like there's so much that we we just don't know what happens behind the scene and being able to peel, down, peel back the, the, um, the curtains, you know, to see what's going on under the hood and all of that. That, that exposes us to, um, to be more aware, more conscious, more appreciative of the different dangers that we find ourselves in, all right? And, and um, it's just, it's, this was just a very good article, breaking it down. This, this is uh, from 1996, all right? Very long time ago, but everything that we read in this article is still very prevalent today. It happens every single day um, to different degrees, to different levels, but it, it's, it's very, I think it's, it's very important that we, we break it down and we understand what's going on. All right. So that is our article for today. Our bug bite or our bug bite um, review of various software industry related bugs. Today, we did it on the Arian Flight V88. We tried to launch the Arian 5, but exploded after 37 seconds of being launched, which was the most infamous and expensive software bug, which cost $370 million 37 seconds after launch. $370 million down the drain right after launch because inadequate development and testing. All right. So I hope you enjoyed, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the bug bite. If you did like the video, share it with a friend, hit the notification bell, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. So you can be informed of every time we go live, every time we release a new video, because we are here for you. And always remember here with tech coach Ralph, we are always engineered to win until next time, my friends, tech coach Ralph signing out.
If you enjoyed the fascinating information shared in this video and you want more, be sure to hit the subscribe button to Tech Coach Ralph to be notified for new videos.